Hi guys and welcome! Today I will show you how you can easily combine old faithful Minecraft railway track system with Ragus Rail Translocator into a very flexible and fast transportation system. Everybody should know what the Minecraft rails are. It's a very flexible and robust transport system, but it's actually quite slow. Here we have three sections of a powered rail, each one is 20 blocks long, up, down and or forward. And if you run on this track, you can verify that each meter section takes 50 ticks to run, meaning the maximum speed is 8 blocks per second per axis, regardless of the direction. A Ragu translocator is this contraption here with detector rails, sticky pistons and some immovable blocks, melons in this case, and slime blocks. This section here consists of 20 segments, which is 40 blocks long, and it'll take us only 20 ticks or 1 second to get through it, meaning a top speed of 40 blocks per second. So what struck me the first time I saw this was not the speed of this contraption, there are other piston ball designs that can do 30 blocks per second, but the ease of connecting it with regular rail system, making it for very fast and robust combo. Switching from rail to translocator is very easy, just roll out your minecart from a rail onto a detector rail and it's done. On the other hand, it is a little bit more tricky, as if you would use typical segments like this one, it would pull back the rail in front of it. To elevate this issue, we can remake the segment like so, forming like a step looking segment, which will prevent the rail from being pulled back. Another thing we can notice immediately is that although the minecart landed on the powered rail, it stayed put because the minecart technically is not riding those translocator elements, meaning that the minecart will not get any additional momentum from it. And minecarts without momentum in the direction of a powered rail won't go on their own. Here in the beginning we rolled in a minecart with some momentum from these powered rails and it successfully rolled back on the rails at the end so we have our first finding that momentum is preserved when we leave the translocator. This becomes problematic at the corners where we enter the section with momentum on, on different axes than we leave, meaning that despite we rolled in with some speed we will just stay put at the end. The same happened when we make a U-turn, the minecart just wants to roll back on the detector rail. That's where you can make use of combining a few elements of a regular rail system with the translocator to add a little bit of momentum in appropriate direction at each turn, allowing us to connect smoothly with the traditional rail endpoints. There is one more thing to consider is how this power rail joins with neighboring rails, which is unfortunately directional. So this one connects in the direction we want it to go, which is fine. But this one changes whenever we move the detector rail, making us run off the rail when we send the minecart through. To fix it, we can simply connect this rail on the other end as well, thus forcing it to point this way. Another feature of traditional rail system, which most piston balls don't have, is the ability of going up and down. You can achieve some of it with changing a little bit the design of each segment. This translocator uses three long elements, combining one segment of Ragu translocator with a powered rail, and it takes three ticks to run in one segment, giving us the horizontal speed of 20 blocks per second and vertical incline of 6.7 blocks per second, so in total twice as fast comparing to regular rail. The drawback is that the ride is not that smooth though. Going downhill works actually better just by offsetting vertically each segment of the translocator rail system. What happens after release by one segment, we fall for one tick until we got detected by the detector rail again, giving us 20 meters per second horizontally and at the same time getting 10 meters per second falling speed, which is faster than on powered rail and almost as fast as free falling. And the ride is much smoother as well. The only issue is that all the momentum we had at the beginning that allowed us to roll onto a regular rail is gone at this point, because we were falling, technically, in the minecart, meaning we need to obtain it somewhat again, but we'll get back to that issue later on. There's one more trick with piston balls and translocators in general. If you send minecarts or entities into unloaded chunks, so with no player present, their behavior is typically very wonky. In this case, I have four lines going in two directions, offset by one block, so the slime block patterns cross chunk borders in a slightly different way. What it turns out, in some directions the translocator works fine as we load next chunks, so both minecarts would reach their end eventually. In 
The other direction though, one minecart stops after reaching a loaded chunk and breaks the transfigurer, and the other one continues going. To prevent that from happening, we want to avoid sending empty minecarts on longer trips. You can do it like so, with a simple player detection string attached to a pulse extender that controls this turn, so we can collect rogue minecarts. Other methods of controlling it we'll see in a moment in my proposed metro-style transportation system. This contraption here also shows how one can connect to a standard monorail without any additional protection as well. Useful in a single player world and as a connection to standard minecart loading and unloading stations. Translocator, like normal rails, works only when there are no mobs standing on the way. So it's very important to prevent all spawns on the translocator elements. Slime box are easy, carpets or leaves placed on top of them will do the job. But the spots between detector rails are tougher to spawn proof as they should remain empty. You can spawn proof it with some glass at the head level, but if you don't want to ride inside blocks, you can just use buttons attached to blocks at the head level to make these spots spawn proof, either alternating like so or just on one side keeping the consistent view of the other side. With the flexibility of switching to traditional rail system, one can easily add these intermediate stations which would allow stepping in and out of the system midway, a good solution for a single player world. With multiplayer, when we can have potentially multiple players using the network at the same time, we don't want to keep empty micros blocking rail and random locations. So I came up with this idea that looks very similar to like a metro or underground line with stations that allows players to hop off the trains, get on the trains or whiz through the stations if they please. The terminal stations are easy because we always want to kick anybody here and recycle the minecarts for the next players, because that's the end of the ride. What we have here is a simple minecart storage system when we can go in two directions and when we leave the area it would pop the new minecarts for the new player after us. I like the second design better with the minecarts flat with the ground. So let's go to the first station to see how it works in practice. As you just saw, we hopped off and the minecart got collected at the cactus at the station where we ended our ride. The stations are 12 powered rails long, which gives about 1.5 seconds for the player to react and hop off the minecart if they want. But you can keep them shorter or longer as you like. If we would continue the ride in the minecart, we would trigger these butt detectors which would put us back on the next session of the metro tube system instead of trashing the minecart onto a cactus. If we wish to start the journey on the station, we can simply pop into a minecart and drive off in the desired direction. But also like in a normal metro line, we can just continue riding and hop off at any station we want. Here is a more finished one where I attempted to hide most of the technical bits and a finished tunnel with all the necessary spawn proofing done with some extra redstone torches for dimmed tunnel lighting. Next we have an incline section with a terminal section up high. These sections are still quite fast but the ride is not as smooth so minimizing changes in elevation is generally a good idea. Here I should point out that I was solving the issue where falling minecarts are considered to have zero momentum, so you have to give some push for the leaving minecarts to direct them back onto a proper direction, otherwise the minecart would just stall. At the end, a small survival tip why I have chosen melons and leaves as part of the design is because leaves are very easy to obtain in large quantities. Just plant birch trees five blocks apart from each other in all directions, grab a few shears, point them up and just walk in lines to get lots of leaves for your projects. Melons are also very easy to farm. Here is a farm based on Il Mango's concept of an efficient pumpkin melon farm that uses a few extra farmlands blocks outside of the farm so the other crops are not for decoration but to speed up the growth of the melons. With that many resources, building many translocator lines shouldn't be an issue. So that was your flexible railway system with Ragu translocator combo. 
which you can use to build your own fast metro-like tube transportation system. I hope you liked the video and some of the designs I presented today. If that's the case, please leave me a like, comment, share and subscribe for more such small ideas in the future. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.